Hello, math humans. We are going to do section 1.8 today. We're going to be talking about composite functions. Our objectives are that we're going to combine functions into composite functions. So we pre-wrote a couple of things just to make things go a little bit quicker. Functions are representations of numbers. So therefore, if I can do operations on numbers, then I can also do operations on functions. And that would be that logical conclusion. So then, you know, probably want to pause and write this down. I can do math on functions. So I can add two functions together. I can subtract two functions. I can do the product of two functions where I can multiply them together. And then I can do the quotient. The only thing that you really have to be careful with when you do a quotient is to make sure that for the denominator, that the denominator doesn't equal zero. Because remember, we can't divide by zero, and if we try to divide by zero, then the world explodes, and that's a really sad day. All right, so let's jump in with some examples. So our first example, I'm gonna have f of x is equal to 2x plus one, and g of x is gonna equal x squared plus 2x minus one, and I want to find f plus g of x, and then I wanna find, oops, sorry, I lied. We're gonna make that, just cover that little guy up. I wanna evaluate the sum at two, and then I wanna do f minus g and evaluate it at two as well. All right, so let's do f plus g of x first. So if I do f plus g of x, then that is f of x plus g of x. And so if I do that math, here's 2x plus 1, and then I have plus x squared plus 2x minus 1. And when I simplify that, the 1s cancel, and this is going to be x squared plus 4x. Somebody loves me. Woohoo! And of course, then we want to identify our answer as well. Well, if I want to evaluate that function at 2, so f plus g of 2 is going to be 2 squared plus 4 times 2, and then this is going to be 12. So then if I report my answer as well, f plus g, whoops, you almost can't see it, of 2 is going to be 12. So now let's do f minus g, and then we'll get to the 2 at the end. So f minus g is going to be f of x minus g of x. And I'm not going to do the evaluation until I get to the end. So f of x is 2x plus 1 minus, and you have to make sure that you use your parentheses, so this is 2x plus 1. I'm going to distribute the negative minus x squared minus 2x plus 1. Alrighty. And then if, if these cancel now. And so then when I simplify this, I'm going to get f minus g of x is going to equal a negative x squared plus 2. And then if I want to evaluate that at the point of 2, this is a negative 2 squared plus 2, and then this is a negative 2. Let me scoop my paper up a little bit. And then if I report well, then this is going to be f minus g of 2 is equal to a negative 2. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. For our next example, example 2, if I have f of x is equal to x squared and g of x is equal to x minus 3, I want to find f times g of x, and then I want to do f times g of 4. Okay, so, sorry, you can't see that. I'm going to find f times g of x, and then I'm going to evaluate that at f of 4. So f times g of x, so f g of x is going to equal x squared times x minus 3, which is x cubed minus 3x squared. And then if I do f g of 4, then this is going to be 4 to the third minus 3 times 4 squared. And that turns out to be 
16. And because you guys are brilliant math humans, I'm assuming that you can get to that value. And also assuming that I didn't screw something up and make a mistake. All right. So here's what we need to talk about next. When we talk about our compositions, the domain of a composition is going to be the intersection of the individual domains. So if I am doing a composition and then I want to find the domain of that composition, that is just going to be the intersection of the individual domains. So then let's do an example. So I know that f of x is going to be the square root of x and g of x is going to equal 4 minus x squared and I want to find f divided by g of x and I want to state the domain. So I have two different tasks to do on this one. Okay. So first I'm going to start by doing the domain of each of those. So the domain of f of x. Okay. So if you think about the square root of x, ah, somebody loves me. The graph of that looks like this. So the domain of this one is from 0 to positive infinity. The domain of g of x is going to go, and so if you graph this one, this one actually looks really cool. I'll squeeze it in down here. It looks like a semicircle, and it goes from a negative 2 to a positive 2. Is that true? I think that's true. Alrighty. So then the domain for g of x is going to be a negative 2 to 2. Well, I'm going to put this on a number line just to illustrate what I talked about up here when I said it's the composition. So the domain of f of x is from 0 to positive infinity. So it's all of these guys. The domain of g of x is a negative 2 to 2, so then it's these. So then the domain is where they overlap, and that would be the domain of the composition. Okay. So I'm going to say, I'm actually going to do the domain first. So the domain of f divided by g of x is going to be from 0 to 2. The 2 is not going to be included. I'll explain that in just a moment. So now let's do f of x divided by g of x. So that's going to be the square root of x divided by 4 minus x squared. And I don't have to simplify this. This is polite to leave it as is. Here's why the 2 is not included. If I square a 2, I get a 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. I can take the square root of 0, but I can't divide by 0 because the world explodes. So even though the numbers are from 0 to 2, 2 can't be included because then the world would explode. All right. Our next topic on composing functions is going to be called the composition of functions. And in theory, this is a review from what you've done in previous math courses, and you'll remember it, I'm sure, as we get started. So it looks like the notation, either f of g of x, or that can be written as f of g of x. Okay. When you are managing a composition, you must, and this is one of those capital letter words, must start on the inside. Oops, spelled it wrong. So I am going to start. Boy, I'm popular today. Woohoo! You must start on the inside. All right? And then you're going to work out. Woohoo! We like to work out. You, the other thing that I would highly recommend when you're doing a composition is show all of your work. When you start trying to skip steps, that's when we start to make mistakes. So show the steps. It'll take you about half a second longer. So let's start and do an example. So this is going to be example four. And I'm going to let f of x equal x plus 2, and g of x is going to equal 4 minus x squared. And I want to find f of g of x, and then I want to find g of f of x, 
and then I want to evaluate g of f of a negative 2. All right, so remember the notation is these two things say the same thing. That's not a g o f, that's a g little circle of f. All right, so let's start with f of g of x. I like to rewrite it because this makes more sense in my little brain. So this is f of, now I'm going to write my input, 4 minus x squared. Now this becomes the input into this function, so this goes into every x in the original function. So this is 4 minus x squared, and then I have the plus 2. If I simplify that, I would get a negative x squared plus 6, and this is f of g of x. Now I want to do the opposite direction. I want to do g of f of x. And I again, I like this notation. It just helps my brain a little bit. So here's the g. I'm going to do him last. My input is x plus 2. Now this is going to go into everywhere there's a variable in g of x. So this is 4 minus x plus 2 quantity squared. So now I'm going to expand this. So the, I'll just write my equals over here. This is 4 minus. I'm going to do x squared plus 4x plus 4. So in big kids math, you need to be able to expand the binomial really quickly because I don't have time to do x plus 2 times x plus 2 and draw my little arms and distribute. So here's the shortcut. I'm going to square the first term, x squared. I'm going to multiply the inside together, 2x, and double it, 4x, and I'm going to square the last term. All right, so I'm going to write a little shortcut, a plus b, quantity squared, square the first term, multiply the insides together, and double it, square the last term. All right, so now if I go back to my example, I need to distribute the negatives. So this is 4 minus x squared minus 4x minus 4. The 4s cancel. So g of f of x is going to be a negative x squared minus 4x. Okay? And just turn my page and make sure I didn't screw anything up. I think I'm good. So now I want to evaluate this function at a negative 2. So g of f of a negative 2 is going to be a negative, negative 2 squared minus 4 times a negative 2. A negative 2 squared is a positive 4, negative 4. So this is a negative, negative 4 plus 8, which is 4. And then I report well. So my g of f of a negative 2 is equal to 4. All right. I have one more example for us, so I'm going to do example 5. All right, f of x in this case is going to be x squared minus 9. g of x is going to be 9 minus x squared. And then I want to find f of g of x, and I want to state the domain. So remember for the domain that the domain is the intersection. So I'm going to find the two individual domains first. So the domain of f of x, this is just a parabola that's been shifted down 9. So if you think about the graph, it's just going to look like that. So the domain of the first function is all real numbers. The domain on the second one, and you can put it in your grapher if it helps and look at what the graph looks like. But the domain on, oops, i got to put the domain. The domain is a negative 3 to 3. So then if we talk about where those overlap, the domain of the composition f of g of x is going to equal a negative 3 to 3, okay? Because this is the overlap between these two. All right, so now let's do the composition. So I want to do f of g of x. Remember, I like this notation just because it helps my little brain. I'm not going to do f yet. I'm going to put in 9 minus x squared because that's g. Now this is going to go into this location. So I'm going to have 
9 minus x squared squared minus 9. There's a lot of 9s in this one. When I square a radical, I get what's underneath the radical. I get 9 minus x squared minus 9. The 9s cancel. So I get f of g of x is going to equal a negative x squared. And then the domain is going to be only in this area. So for this particular problem, even though the domain of a negative x squared is all real numbers, when I put the two functions together, I'm looking for the overlap of those two particular domains. All right, my math humans, that is it for today. I will see you soon.